India is home to over 1.4 billion people. And of those 1.4 billion people, over 450 million are located within the northwest states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Uttar Pradesh, about one-third of all Indians. Unfortunately, this region also happens to be one of the most water distressed in the entire world. So why is India struggling to fix its water issues in the region? And what will happen if it fails to do so? Hello and welcome to Geography by Jeff. Today we're off to India to explore the vast northwest states and its dire water issues that are being exacerbated by climate change. If you're unaware, the entire region is home to hundreds of millions of people who will be forced to move if the region's water can no longer sustain them. And that will have reverberating impacts for the world at large. But first, let's go way back in time to see how a similar scenario played out already. India's northwest region encompassing the modern-day states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Uttar Pradesh, has an incredibly deep history. And the story of this region of India begins all the way back with the Indus Valley Civilization, one of the world's oldest urban cultures. According to historians, around 2500 BCE, the Indus Valley Civilization was flourishing. During this time, the civilization boasted major cities like Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, and Lothal. These urban centers, located in what are now Punjab, Haryana, and Gujarat, showcased remarkable urban planning, architecture, and social organization. In many ways, the Indus Valley Civilization really was the precursor to the development of modern cities. But beginning around 1900 BCE, the Indus Valley Civilization began its decline until it ultimately faded from the world entirely. In fact, by 1700, it's estimated that most of the Indus Valley Civilization's impressive cities were completely abandoned. And while their decline is still the subject of much debate, one of the primary theories is focused on how the climate changed and ultimately impacted the amount of water in the region. This climate change was caused by an event only known as the 4.2 kilo year event. The 4.2 kilo year event, occurring approximately 4,200 years ago, was one of the most severe climatic events of the Holocene Epoch. Lasting for an extended period of time, this event was marked by substantial global desertification and cooling, leading to significant disruptions in human civilizations across the globe. And this climatic event is believed to have caused the prolonged droughts in the region that the Indus Valley Civilization inhabited. The Indus Valley, heavily dependent on monsoon rains for its agriculture, would have faced devastating impacts from reduced rainfall. This would have affected the agricultural yields, leading to food shortages and societal stress. And these climatic events are also thought to have prompted changes in river systems, with the Gagar Hakra River specifically, once a significant source of many Indus Valley settlements, drying up or changing course. The disappearance or reduction of river systems would have made many of the established cities uninhabitable, leading to migrations and the abandonment of whole cities. There's significant evidence in archaeological records of shifts in population centers, with settlements relocating to areas with more reliable water sources like the Ganges Plains. The effects of the 4.2 kilo year event, combined with other factors such as the Indo-Aryan migrations, likely played a pivotal role in the gradual decline and eventual dissolution of the Indus Valley Civilization. Of course, any civilization's end rarely comes from a single event. But while it's important to acknowledge that civilizations are influenced by a multitude of factors and not just climate events, the 4.2 kilo year event serves as a poignant reminder of the intricate relationship between environmental changes and the trajectory of human societies. And the story of the Indus Valley Civilization may foreshadow what could happen in the region once again today. Northwest India has been the home of people for thousands of years. And it's because this region in particular has so much to offer in terms of livability, agriculture, and water. But with climate change, that might not continue to be the case. And this will have reverberating impacts for India as a whole. But before we get to India's current water problem, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. But also, I'm making this video today because I'm really concerned about the planet as a whole, and I think we should really be doing something to protect it. If you do as well, stick around until the end of the video. There, I'll have an inspiring YouTube channel recommendation from my friends at Planet Wild that you don't want to miss. Before we dive into Northwest India's current water and climate issues, let's run through the geography region just a little bit so we can better understand what's going on. India's northwest region is an incredibly complex geographic area that extends across the states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Uttar Pradesh. This area is a mosaic of landscapes that range from the fertile plains irrigated by the five rivers of Punjab to the arid expanse of the Thar Desert in Rajasthan. 
The northwest region of India is cradled between the imposing Himalayan foothills to the north and the far-reaching arid landscapes to the west. Its fertile lands are nourished by rivers like the Ganges, Yamuna, and Sutlej, and their tributaries, providing life to the vast alluvial plains. These plains, a part of the vast Indo-Gangetic plains that stretch all the way to Bangladesh, is the heartland of agriculture for the region, feeding millions with crops like wheat, rice, and sugarcane. The contrast in landscapes is stark as one moves to the west, where the terrain shifts from the green fields to sandy stretches of the Thar Desert. The desert, though harsh and unforgiving, is interspersed with oasis towns and is home to unique flora and fauna adapted to the extreme conditions. Further south, the Aravalli Range cuts across the region, an ancient mountain range that stands as a natural barrier and climate divider. Its rugged terrain and forest cover hold rich biodiversity and mineral wealth. In Gujarat, the geography takes another turn with extensive coastlines stretching along the Arabian Sea. The Ron of Kutch, a seasonal salt marsh, adds a touch of wonder to the region, contrasting with the lush Gur forest. The last refuge of the Asiatic lion. The southern parts of Uttar Pradesh are marked by the influence of the Vindhya and Satpura ranges, presenting a landscape punctuated with rocky hills and dense forests. Finally, the entire region is defined by its vast river systems. The most iconic among these rivers are the five siblings of Punjab, the Hyalam, Shanab, Ravi, Bees, and Sutlej. Originating from the Himalayas, these rivers meander through the plains, giving Punjab its name, which translates to the Land of the Five Waters. Meanwhile, Uttar Pradesh is mainly defined by the Ganges and its tributaries. The Ganges, revered as the holiest river in Hinduism, starts its journey in the Himalayas and courses through the plains, nurturing cities and farmlands alike. Further west, the Gagar Hakra River, though largely seasonal now, once flowed with vitality and is believed to have been a lifeline for many settlements of the ancient Indus Valley civilization. Unfortunately, all of these rivers are under extreme stress as India attempts to maximize their usage. India's northwest region plays a vital role in the country's economy, particularly in agriculture. However, this region is facing an alarming situation of water distress, characterized by both scarcity and contamination. This water distress has far-reaching impacts on various aspects of life, from agriculture to human health, industry to human migration. In the agriculturally prosperous states of Punjab, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh, the extensive cultivation of water-intensive crops like rice and wheat has led to the over-extraction of groundwater. As a result, the groundwater table has been falling at an alarming rate. The absence of adequate regulation and the provision of subsidized electricity for pumping have exacerbated the problem. Rajasthan, however, part of the Thar Desert, faces chronic water scarcity. The scarcity is not only due to the arid climate, but also inefficient water management practices. Traditional water conservation methods like johads and baulis have been neglected in favor of unsustainable water extraction techniques. Gujarat also faces water scarcity, particularly in the Saurashtra and Kutch regions. But water scarcity is only part of India's water problem. The rivers of the northwest region, like the Ganges, Yamuna, and Sutlej, are lifelines for millions. However, they are plagued by pollution from industrial effluents, domestic sewage, and agricultural runoff containing pesticides and fertilizers. The contamination has severe impacts on human health and aquatic ecosystems. And all of this leads to a huge impact on the region's ability to grow food for its vast population. Declining water tables and contaminated water sources affect crop yield and quality. This means that, at some point, India may have trouble feeding people of this region and its country at large if it's not able to remedy its water extraction practices. Today, India's northwest region has a lot of people living in it. All told, the Indian states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Uttar Pradesh are home to about 450 million people, about one-third of all Indians. If this region were its own country, it would be the third largest in the world, far larger than the United States. In Punjab, with a population of approximately 30 million, cities like Ludhiana, Amritsar, and Chandigarh comprise most of the state's population. Known as the Granary of India, Punjab's economy leans heavily on agriculture, particularly wheat and rice production, complemented by a growing manufacturing and service sector. Haryana, neighboring Punjab, is home to about 29 million people. The state is also recognized for its agricultural importance, yet cities like Faridabad and Gurgaon are transforming into hubs for information technology and the automobile industry. Rajasthan, with a population of approximately 78 million, is home to the major cities of Jaipur, Jodhpur and Udaipur, which are not only tourist attractions, but also centers for mining and textiles. Gujarat, located on the western edge of India, supports around 63 million people. 
The cities of Ahmedabad, Surat, and Vadodara are bustling with activities in sectors like petrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, and diamonds. Gujarat's commitment to renewable energy, particularly solar and wind, also positions them as an innovative and forward-thinking state. Finally, Uttar Pradesh, the most populous state in India with approximately 220 million residents, offers a diverse economic landscape. Major cities like Lucknow, Kanpur, and Varanasi lead in agriculture, with significant contributions from wheat, sugarcane, and rice production. But while these regions are bustling, they could end up going the same way as the Indus Valley civilization if water usage doesn't change. In an era of climate change, the region's 450 million people could be faced with forced migration, and this would have a huge impact on Asia and the world as a whole. Of course, many of these people would likely move to other parts of India due to the relative ease of such a move, but that would only further strain India's southern and eastern cities, regions that have their own problems and massive populations already. So other countries would likely see a huge increase in migration of Indians as well. One of the most likely candidates for migration would be the United States. Already home to millions of Indians who have migrated to the country over the last few decades, this provides an anchor to many more who would like to make the country home. But the U.S. is unlikely to take in very many. As such, other countries such as the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and other countries in the Middle East would likely absorb millions of Indians as well, following a pattern that has emerged in recent years. Finally, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia would also likely be a favorable home to many Indians. The entire country, of course, was once under the colonial rule of the British Empire and... As such, many Indians still make their home within countries that were formerly part of the British Empire today. Regardless of where Indians go, few regions with so many people have faced such an existential crisis before, and this will have an incredible impact not only on India, but the world unless India's water issues are resolved. Northwest India is home to nearly a half billion people, and that requires a lot of resources. Luckily, the region as a whole has been able to support that amount of people. But if it's going to continue to do so, something will need to change if India wants people to continue to live there. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm finding that I really want to do something about climate change in a more direct manner. As such, I partnered with my friends at Planet Wild to bring you a special video recommendation for those of you who don't want to wait for somebody else to do something about protecting our planet. Every month, Planet Wild launches a new mission in order to rewild our planet and to reverse the damage humans have done to nature and Planet Wild documents their work for impact and transparency in monthly videos right here on YouTube. All of their work gets financed through a community, which everyone can join, who want to support the protection and future of our planet. I've already joined it myself because I care deeply about wildlife rehabilitation. Prior to my time making videos about geography, I worked on projects here in Oregon to restore areas so that they're fit for wildlife once again. And while policy changes are incredibly important at every level, direct action in environmental restoration is just as important. With each Planet Wild video, you'll learn a lot about nature while seeing what Planet Wild does every month to protect it. As wildfires are a big problem in Europe and cause a lot of harm to nature, this month, Planet Wild is equipping private firefighters in Italy so that they can better protect their land against wildfires. You can watch this video here, or this other video where they're restoring a river where millions of fish died in an ecological disaster. So go check them out and see for yourself.